Perfect stuff. So, good. hello everyone. You're all very welcome to tonight's Pasture Basin Grass Time webinar, of which this is the third in our series. Tonight's webinar is titled Getting Familiar with Pasture Base Ireland. And over the course of the next hour, we will be aiming to help people who are beginning out on their grass measurement journey as we go through a step-by-step -step process of using Pasture Base Ireland. We will also be looking at maybe some of the, the new tools and functionality on Pasture Base. So this will also help maybe more some more existing users and some of our more experienced users to make better use of Pasture Base Ireland and help them to achieve grades and excellence on their farm. So my name is Joseph Dunphy, and I'm once again delighted to be joined by my Grass 10 colleague, John Douglas and Michal O'Leary from Pasture Base Ireland. A small little bit of housekeeping once again, just before we get going. Um, please put any questions that you have um, for, for any of our panelists there in, in the Q&A box on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Look, we get a lot of questions in, in you know, into, a, into our webinars, so we'll endeavour to get through as many as possible on the night. So look, at, uh, we're coming into a very, very busy season on Irish farms, so we know not everyone is going to be able to get on the webinar live tonight. So this webinar, along with along with the rest of our webinars, is uh, available on the Chagas Grass 10 page on the Chagas Public website. So, on the so when you when you just uh, I suppose to get to to get to this and to maneuver around this, if you if you Google Chagas Grass 10, and down on the left hand side of the of the of the Grass 10 page, you'll see the the webinars button or webinars webinars subheading, and when you click when you click into that you can see here all our webinars will be available so this is just the example of our webinar there before christmas our achieving grades and excellence webinar on the wednesday 9th of december the recording from the night the pdf of the the of the uh, of the presentation will be there and some questions that maybe came in on the night and we didn't get to, didn't get to answer due to running out of time so so that's all available there on the grass 10 page so we'll be look at it's it's i suppose it's good if anyone else you know if anyone even on the call tonight you know you know wants to go back and watch over on maybe something that they missed you know it there it's good it's good to good to have it there so just the structure of our webinar tonight so we're just going to run through a couple of um uh, bits and pieces on pasture based usage and performance in 2020 and then we're going to get straight into i suppose the bones of our of our webinar tonight, which I suppose John Douglas is going to give us, uh, a, I suppose, a, a run over on the using Pasture Base Ireland on the web browser, you know, in, you know, and I suppose under all the subheadings there. And um, then we're going to cut over to the, uh, to the app, the offline app for Pasture Base and, you know, go through, go through that from, from start to finish in terms of from downloading the app the whole way through to entering covers. Okay. So, just to, I suppose, to start off and and go through some of the some some data on Pasture Base Ireland, roughly about uh, Pasture Base Ireland represents about four hundred thousand dairy cows um, in the country, so roughly about twenty five percent of the national herd, and between dairy, beef, and sheep farms in the country, there's about thirty six hundred pasture base users in twenty twenty. So just a small, just some statistics on on uh, you know fr from pasture base ireland over the last number of years and just breaking it down by the dairy beef and sheep sectors so just you know some of the grassland performance from 2013 to 2020 you know so if we take some of the figures there for 2020 there was roughly about 13.4 ton grown roughly you know i suppose broken up by about 11 and a half ton of grass dry matter and grazing and another 1900 just shy of two ton in silage off 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 platforms this this i suppose have broken down to about 7.4 grazings per paddock and about 0 0.6 um of a silage cut per paddock an average pre-grazing yield of somewhere around 1550 uh, kilos of dry matter per hectare on the sheep side of things uh, farmers with over 20 covers recorded we're probably looking at somewhere around 11.1 .1 tons of dry matter grown on average um, in 2020 again number of grazing somewhere around 5.7 per paddock and silage cuts another half a half a half a silage cut per paddock and about 1650 in terms of pre-grazing yield so and then on the beef side of the on the beef side of the house again with over 20 covers recorded we're looking at somewhere in around 10 tons of dry matter um grown on average in 2020 about 5.1 grazings and about 0.7 of a of a, of a 
um, events in silage cut uh, of silage cuts for 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 2020 about 1640 in terms of pre grazing yield so look at um, there's been a you know a lot of progress over the last the last few years but also i suppose a lot to be achieved you know on irish farms um, you know, over the over the over the next coming years, and look at you know, in terms of we'd be encouraging everyone to make you to make best use of of pasture base, um, in order to drive drive the performance on grassland performance on their own farms. So, just as John, as you're getting set up there, Michal, is a quick question for you in terms of um, in terms of pasture base usage, roughly at peak in in 2020. Um, how many covers were being recorded weekly uh, on Pasture Base Ireland? And roughly what break, I suppose, the, the split of people that were using the offline app and, uh, and put them in on the web browser as John is just loading up here? Yeah, so um, good night, everyone. Um, so, yeah, so I suppose we would have peaked, I suppose, there in, I suppose, the middle of June with roughly about 2,200 covers coming in each week. Um, so and about half of that would have been coming from the app. So I suppose we have seen um, we have seen about fifty percent of our of the covers coming into pasture base are coming uh, via the app, and I think that is growing more and more as time goes on, um, which is great that people are using that facility. Great stuff. So John, I'll throw it over to you there in terms of in terms of um, starting off on the on on the browser there. Yeah, thanks very much, Joe. And again, thanks everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, it's great to see uh, this was the commitment from, from farmers like yourselves to, to grow and utilise more grass and using pasture base as, as part of that, as a key tool, a part of that. So just for anyone not familiar with pasture base, this is the homepage. If you can just see there's the, the web address, just pasturebase.chagas.ie. Again, just put pasture base into Google and the, the website will appear. Um, so this is where I'd enter my login details. And just on the homepage before I enter login details, there's also a link here in the orange box here to the Grass 10 weekly update. Um, if we scroll down then, there's there's three features here. The one on the left is the grass growth maps. So there's it's broken down by county. You can see the grass growth for, for each county there. And also there's a predicted growth for the week. So that's from Elodie's model, model that, that's in the Grass 10 newsletter each week. That's uploaded there for, for the provinces. We also have um, where the research farms are at in terms of grass measuring. And if you can see here, there's a list of them. And if we just take curtains here, for example, we can see that they cover there on the 11th of January and the farm cover was 925 and what the growth was for the winter period uh, and what dry matter percentage they were using for that. So there's a bit of in, uh, information there that might be useful to farms in your vicinity. And then we have the, the link to social media there also. And not forgetting, and probably some of the most important buttons, especially when you're getting, so, um, um, when you're getting going on pasture basis, the help center. So this, if I click into the help center here, there's a, there's a vast amount of information here on how to use pasture base and setting up your account and um, setting up different features of pasture base. But really, I suppose if you're just getting started and you don't have a pasture base account yet, what you need to click on here is how do I get started as a farmer? We click on that and it, it, it opens up a PDF link here for the registration form. And so there's the Pasture Base Ireland registration form. So if you uh, haven't got haven't got account an account yet and you want to get set up, if you go onto this um, page, you can you can print this off and fill in the details and and hand it into your local Chagas advisor to assist you getting registered, or you can email the form to uh, support at pbi.ie, or again if you if you, even if you don't want to print it off, you can just email those details to support at pbi.ie and they'll get you uh, set up, and the phone number is also there for the help center. All right, so that's probably very important, and we'll come back to the help center uh, after we do the wedge as well, because it, it can help us interpret the data as well. So we're just going to log in now. Um, so I'm going to log in on our account we're using tonight. So we've a special account made up um, for this webinar tonight, just to for the purposes of demonstration. So, um, if I can remember the password now. Right, I think that's okay. Michal, just a quick question there in terms of turnaround from, um, I suppose, you know, filling up that form and registering until, you know, I suppose you roughly have a, a you know, the account set up. Roughly how long does it take? 
Yeah, sure. In general, in fairness to the, the help centre, they're, they're extremely efficient. And to be honest, if you sent it in in the morning, you would be up and running in probably two hours, I'd say. Um, so the, the turnover is, is very quick. Super that's stuff. Brilliant. Yeah, that's brilliant. So this is your home page. So when you log in, um, obviously there was a, a um, an opening cover or a cover, first cover of the year was already um, uh, completed on this pasture based account. But when you log in, you, there'll be no there'll be no cover here. Your dashboard will basically be empty uh, of all this all this data. So the first thing you need to do when you get when you get in here, um, there, this is the, the the menu section on the left hand side. So this is where where you can go, click into your your farm details, click into your covers. If you want to record a graze or cut silage, you're going to set up your milk sales, your da your link. Um, you can enter fertilizer this way, but Mihal will show you that in the app, and it's probably handier. You can put in up your rotation planners. Again, Mihal will show you that on the app. Um, you can do your grass budget. You can enter reseeding events. You can enter side test report um, results, and there's a range of reports that we went through in previous webinars as well. Uh, here so there's there's a lot of different features and don't be overwhelmed by it you know just get going the, the main thing is to get going with your with your walks your farm walks at the moment so to do that really we need to start with paddocks okay so i have a good few paddocks set up on this um account already and we can see here up the top the uh, total active area is 19 hectares so that's the the area of all the paddocks that are that are entered onto the account so i'm just going to show you how to add a paddock now so these ones are already added so I'm just going to show you maybe how to delete one first, because some of you might have one to a couple to delete. Um, now, if you have a lot of, of moving around or changing around with paddocks, maybe you change the layout of them, whatever, we do recommend contacting the support center on pasture base, because we don't want you losing the information on, on paddocks that were recorded previously. So if we just click on edit, so I'm editing paddock 19. And if I wanted to exclude that paddock, so basically I'm, I'm not using it anymore for the rest of the year, I just click exclude this paddock. And now that paddock is uh, is excluded there. Okay, so when I um when I, I I'm going to add two more paddocks now. Just show you how to add the paddocks. So this green box here on the top right hand side is add new paddock. So I'll just make the screen slightly bigger. Now, um, so I'm going to add a new paddock. So I'm going to put the code in as as paddock twenty. Uh, I'm going to put the area as one hectare. I'll put the, the name, paddock name is paddock 20 as well. You don't really have to worry about walk order. It'll come up as sort of the next one on the list. But if you want to, if paddock 20, for instance, was the first paddock you were walking into, we generally try and uh, say that we'll put the, um, you know, the same way you would walk the farm as if you're going to measure the grass. That's the way the, that's the walk order should be. Because if you're using the app or printing off the walk sheet, um, it'll, it'll come out that order. So it'll be the next one on the list. So, um, just make sure you, you, you can move them. I'll show you how to move them up and down. And just select what mob. So you might have, we'll say, you know, one one grazing block or maybe two grazing blocks that are beside each other uh, or next to each other. And they'll, you know, one set of paddocks might be for, you know, we'll say a different group of cattle, like it could be young stock. And then um, you, your main block might be for the main batch of, of dairy cows or the main batch of suckler cows or the, the main sheep block. So you can pick a mob, whichever mob you want to put them into, and you can go back and change that. All this information here can be changed, okay? So we'll just save that. So I put that paddock into mob two, and I'm just gonna add one more paddock then. Again, I'm just gonna go paddock 21, and I'm going to go area one hectare. I'm just keeping it simple. You, you'll know the, the areas of your own paddocks and i suppose that's probably one thing you should you know if you don't have a map of your farm you should probably try and get a map even if it's a bps map and and break up the the paddocks as they as they are and get you know your best estimate of of, of the area there's lots of different apps you can use now for for identifying the areas of paddocks and um you know use them and um where make that paddock mob to use them and get 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 a map for your farm it's handy to stick it up somewhere as well and um you know, there's endless uses for it. So I'm just going to save that now again. Okay. So now my total area now is, is 20 hectares, right? So I'm just going to change one paddock there as six. I'm just going to change this one here. I'm going to edit paddock 15, I think. And I'm going to put it into, um, into mob one there. I'm just going to save that. 
So now I have 15 paddocks in Mob 1 and I have 5 paddocks in Mob 2. So that generally sort of represents maybe a main a main group of stock and a, and a younger group of stock or a smaller group, okay? So now my paddocks are sorted, right? So before you can use the app, you still have to do one cover on the desktop. So I'll have to go in and to the into the next uh, section down and we see grass cover or wedge and we'll just, we'll just go into the list first to see what's here on the page. So um, on the page then you can, before you add another cover, you can export a walk sheet, which basically will have the, um, I'll just load that up because some of you might use this. Uh, can you see that, Joe? I'm not sure if the screen has changed. Yeah, no, we can see that, yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's grand. Okay, so you can see there each paddock and the walk number, and um, you can enter in the, the covers on this, and some people find that useful because they go back inside and upload the data then. Um, and then add a new grass cover. This is where we're, this is where we're at. So we're after putting in the paddocks, and then we want to add a new grass cover. So we click on this, and I'm just going to backdate this for the purpose of tonight. So I'm going to put it back to, sorry, the 25th of January. So just make sure you get the date right, because that'll affect your growth rates. Obviously, if the paddock has grown 500 in the space of seven days or 500 in the space of, of four days, that's going to make a big difference to growth rates. So make sure you have the date right. Okay, so... This is the this is the screen it brings you to. There's different columns here, the paddock name, area. This is the cover we're going to enter on paddocks. And um, this is the paddock status. This is the mob they're in. And this is was the, the result on the last walk. So you can see the last walk was done on the 10th of January. Okay. So um, I'm just going to enter in covers, um, enter in a few covers here. So I'm just going to, um, so I'm basically adding, adding them on from the last day. Okay. So, you might you might also see there uh, there's the different paddock status okay so we take it that um we take it that paddock two here if i if i was to put um if i was to put 1500 in that sorry no if i was to put 200 in that and move on what it's looking for here there's a red box appears and anywhere there's a red box it's looking for information so you know, you might hear farmers talking about how much grass they've grown and their annual tonnage report. Well, if you don't put input this information, you won't get that accurate information on, on the annual tonnage or on your reports, okay? So you need to write down the date that that paddock was grazed and it's sometime between your last walk and this walk. And you have to write down how much kilos of dry matter was on it. So it would be 1,800. And, and, that, and then you click save. Or if it was a silage, a silage event, you can put in um, the num you can put in the silage yield if you want you know if it was 2,000 kilos of dry matter of silage or you could put in that there was we'd say 20, 20 bales on that paddock and 200 kilos of, of dry matter si of, of dry kilos of dry matter per bale you can use that either and that will calculate um, the silage yield on that paddock okay so that that's important to enter that information so put the date the yield and save right so I'm just going to cancel that for now just want to show you that for the purposes of tonight John, just before you just go any further there, I think I think it actually when you when you open up the edit of that paddock there, it explains it fairly well. But if a question coming in there, what's the equation from going from centimeters of grass to kilos of dry matter? Centimeters of grass to kilos of dry matter. Okay, so uh, it's a little bit different for sheep and cattle farms. So for cattle farms, you're generally talking about grazing down to a residual of four centimeters, and um, you know that's that's the height that we want to graze the grass down to. So every centimeter above that four centimeters is 250 kilos of dry matter. So if you like, every centimeter above that is is a it's nearly a, a bale of silage if you like on a per hectare basis. So if we have eight eight, eight um, centimeters of grass, we minus we take the four off it because we have four centimeters of residual. So that le leaves us with four centimeters of available grass that the cows or cattle can graze. So four centimeters times 250 is a thousand. So that's a thousand kilos of dry matter. And then for sheep, generally the residuals are a little bit lower because sheep tend to graze a bit lower. So it could be three centimeters, three and a half centimeters. And every centimeter is about, uh, say, 350 kilos of dry matter. Uh, now, if you're mixed stock, I just go in between the two of about 300, but sheep is about 350. So, you know, on a sheep farm, if you had, we'll say, seven and a half centimeters, you minus three and a half, which means you have four centimeters of available grass. But four times three fifty then is is um 
is what is about fourteen hundred. So yep, that you know eight nine centimeters is perfect for sheep grazing, and then you know add another centimeter for more for cattle grazing. So that's that's sort of how it's done. Unless you have any comments there yourself, lads, on that. Nope. Perfect, John. Bang on. Um, just a quick question there for for you, Mihal. Um, if you have a grasshopper, are the fa- is the the map transferred over to pasture base automatically, or is there something you need to set up there to transfer that across? Um, so so the actual map isn't transferred over, but uh, the paddock details are. So the paddock name and the area comes in, um, and they come into the same page there, which which John was on previously. Um, so so just the paddock um, name and area actual map doesn't come in um but we're actually working on a mapping module and there's a couple of questions about mapping we're actually working on a mapping module at the moment um and we're hoping to um to incorporate that into pasture base where the farmer can map their farm and um, we'll be able to display results then on the map whether it's side fertility or covers or days since last grade so that should be there in a couple of weeks time okay, okay. perfect Right, so there's, there's paddock status. Now, this can this can confuse a few people when they start out, right? So, when the when the paddock has is, is being rested, so between between grazings, the paddock is in grass. Okay, the 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 first one there is being grazed. Okay, the only time we use that is if on the day that you are doing your farm walk, that there's animals grazing a certain paddock. Well, then you put it down as being grazed. That's the only time you use it. So if if for instance, like um like the paddock above here, if I had put 200 on this pasture base knows that there's something that something has grazed that or, or cut that grass off that paddock so it looks for a, a grazing day and that's how the paddock you know the, the pasture base knows that that the paddock has been grazed uh, so when it's being grazed you put it down as being grazed it's not included in growth rates for the farm and next week you have to move that back to grass or you can you can record the grazing separately but you have to move that back from being grazed to grass so it goes back to resting state again Okay, you have other enterprise, so sometimes you might have a, a paddock beside the yard that has, um, you know, has a few calves in it or something, and it's not really a part of the main block, but you might have it on pasture base. I'd stick it down as other enterprise. Um, I know some people like, might have wild bird cover for gloss or something, just stick it down as other enterprise. Um, reseed, uh, that's obviously if the paddock is going for reseeding, it's not been in the wedge for maybe two months, it's out. So it's just been in reseeded and I probably wouldn't bring that back in until there's about cover of 500 kilos of dry matter on that paddock. Silage cut later. So if I want to close up and we'll say 20% of the paddocks here because it's coming into late April, early May and I'm taking a cut in silage off them, I can put them down as silage cut later so they won't be cut for a few weeks. Uh, or if it's silage, uh, if you're taking out a paddock straight away, say it's gone strong, and you know yourself, you have plenty of grass, you can just put silage cut now and that's coming off the wedge. And that basically um, puts it back down to zero. But we can use we can use them better underneath the wedge when we look here now the next page. So I'm just going to move on now, right? So we'll move to wedge. Uh, is that everything in yet? Um, they all have a status on them, don't they? Yeah. Right, I don't know that's I have to just I might have to refresh that, will I? Um well, if you if you just go down through them there again, John, the covers. Um so th- there's another question in there as well about mobs. Um and I suppose what is a mob? And I suppose it's a question that we often get, um, the difference between a mob and I suppose a uh, parcel land. Um so a mob is really, I suppose, a piece of land that's dedicated to a type of stock. So, for example, in a dairy farm, you might have 20 paddocks dedicated to um, the, the dairy cows. And mob two, you might have um, you might have your replacement stock. Um, and it, yeah. it might be the same on a beef farm where you would have your suckler cows would be linked to 20 paddocks. And maybe your store cattle might be linked to five or six or, or 10 other paddocks. So I suppose we're just trying to break up the farm um, into different farmlets. Um, and again, it depends on the setup of the farm. Um, and, and I suppose what's going on. Um, yep. We also as well gets, uh, get the question that if you had an outside block of land, uh, should that be treated as mob two? Um, and I suppose the answer to that is if you, you need to measure um, the home farm and the, and the second farm on the same day um, if you're going to go down the, mobs, the mob route. And yep. if you're not going to measure them on the same day, we'd recommend two separate farms. So just, just to clear up that there. Yeah. 
Super stuff. Yeah, so we can select we can select which 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 wedge we want to look at. So you know, for Mob One, which might be your main group of stock, we can select Mob One, and um, it'll only it'll exclude the paddocks that are in Mob Two. And likewise, we can select Mob Two, and it'll exclude the paddocks that are in Mob One. So the only reason they're different colors is just to highlight that they're in different mobs. Okay, so we'll bring it back to all mobs now for the moment. So every paddock here, you can see here, each green each green bar there on this bar chart is is a paddock. And they're different widths. That's that's general. That's due due to the different size of the paddock. So we can see if we hover over the paddocks, it gives us information on them. So paddock four here, we can if we look at the fourth line down, the area is two hectares. If we look at paddock twelve here, it's a lot thinner. If we look at the area, it's 0.5 of a hectare. So that's why they're different widths. Again, the different colours is to do do with um, the mobs. And if there was a paddock being grazed um, here, it's usually brown. So it'll be a brown colour. Um, and we can see here, this is just the paddock information on this, um, on 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 the on particular paddocks, and uh, it goes up in 200s here. So every line there is 200 kilos of dry matter. So you have the paddock here on the on the on the left here has a cover of 1800, and we'll see the paddock here on the right has a cover of about 300. So that's where the paddocks are at. This red line here, this is set with rotation end. We might just touch on it for a second here, but don't worry too much about it in the springtime. It's more in the summer we want to sort that out. So underneath here, we have a farm cover. So farm cover 991. So what that means is that the average cover on the farm has nearly one ton of dry matter on it. So and if you looked around the middle of the wedge here, you would see that it is around one ton of dry matter. If you look over on the on the left-hand side here, it's, it's one, one ton of dry matter or 1,000 kilos of dry matter. That's around the average, and we can see here that that adds up. So it's basically the average cover on each hectare on the farm. Um, the cover per livestock unit is how much grass then, you know, if I have 990 of a of a farm cover, and I'm if I'm stocked, for instance, at three livestock units per hectare, well, then that means I have 330 per, per cover per cow, or cover per livestock unit, sorry. Um, so that means, like, I have the equivalent of, we'll say, a bale and a half of silage of grass for every animal on the farm. That's what that would mean, which is, which would be a lot out there. This, this is your growth figure. So basically, what, what's on it today? What was on it the last time? And we divide that by the number of days, then that's the growth figure. Our demand we set with the livestock. So that comes back to stocking rate and how much grass they're eating. So which, what we try to do throughout, throughout the year, the grazing year, is match this growth with the demand so that we're always keeping lovely quality grass in front of the animals. If the growth is, is way above this demand, well, then you're starting to go into much heavier grass, a lot stemmier. And again, if growth is way below your demand, you're going to run out of grass. OK, uh, this is your stocking right here. We've put in no animals yet, so we, that won't show us anything. Um, so that's 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 most of it here. So underneath here, we have our livestock. I'm going to come back to this in a minute. We also can set rotation length and residual height and pre-grazing yield here. Um, and underneath this is your list of paddocks, right? So if I wanted to, um, well, I'll come back to those paddocks actually again. So I'll go back to livestock here. So if I start here, I'm going to start, I'm going to enter in that I have um, 30, 30 suckler cows, okay? And I'm going to put the average weight, and I might just include the weight of the calf as well. I don't know, I'm just going to say maybe 600 and 200 or 650 and 150, you know, in terms of the cow and the calf, their weight together. So what this, what pasture base does is, um, it calculates the dry matter intake on 2% of the body weight. So 1% of 800 is 8, 2% is 16. So the cows will roughly eat 16 kilos of dry matter, and that's all coming in grass. So the total intake then is 16. And we can set this to either mob 1 or mob 2, and this is my main group of stocks, so I'm going to leave it on mob 1, right? Then I'm going, to, I'm going to say I have yearlings out as well. I have 30 yearlings, and I'm going to say their weight is 400 kilos. And again, if we went two percent of their body weight is eight kilos, so eight or eight appears here. So now, the only thing to do with this is these are going on to mob two. So that this is where you might use mob one and mob two. Okay, and if you just save and update that, then once that save save and updated, we can see here the demand. There's a um, livestock units here are stocked to just over two, just around two and a half, and our demand is 36. So now, now this comes into play where you have a cover per livestock unit or days ahead figure it comes into play now because you know it's not able to calculate how much grass there is per, per animal when you don't tell it how many animals there are. So we have to put that in first. And um, we can John look just in. on just on days ahead, John. 
you know, in terms yeah. of maybe targets for different times of the year or, you know, I know obviously it can, it can differ with stocking rate, but, you know, ballpark figure maybe on dry stock farms there, you know, where, where should the figure be at? Yeah, it'll depend on demand a little bit, but if, you're, if your demand was around 40, you know, you're probably looking at probably 15, 16 days ahead, but like if you're trying to grow as much grass as you can, like you, you can probably push your demand up towards 50 or 60, probably 60. And, um, you know, so in that, in that scenario, 12 days ahead is, is plenty of grass, 10 to 12 days ahead. Is plenty. Okay. Um, and again, there's um, targets, I suppose, for, for, for the different, I'll show, I'll go into the targets and where you can get them on the help center. So if I just move on now and I'll, I'll put in a different circumstance here, I'll say that there is, um, there's 160 yos, right? And I don't know, zero. And we'll say there's, there's 40, 40 dry hoggets. Okay. Um, so this is just for the, for the sheep farmers out there. So if we were putting that in, um, when we put the lactate and yos in, it looks for a mean lambing date. So if we click on the, the calendar here. I'm just going to put down the, the 10th of January, just for argument's sake. I know. Um, so that can calculate the intake. That automatically calculates the intake because as the as the yo has lambed, her intake increases by roughly about 0.1 a week uh, from two and a half kilos um, up to, you know, with her lambs maybe up to four kilos, okay, including her lambs. Um, and the dry yo hoggets there, if we just put in their weight, we put down a 60 kilos and it calculates their intake there at 1.2. Okay, if we save and update that then, again, or we can see our demand has changed here, the stocking rate is different. But, you know, again, we're, we we can look at, you know, what is, what what the cover is on the um, and demand and the figures are for mob one, so this is just for the O's. It's changed slightly, you know. It's a, it's a bit heavier than where the where the, the 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 lambs are because we go to mob two, and we can see that um, the demand here for mob two. Oh, sorry, I, I never adjusted that. Sorry. Uh, what I should have done was I go back to all mobs. What I should have done was move these hoggets into mob two, so that's where you got that's where I got cut out there. So I save and update that, and if I go back to mob two. I, I see the paddocks here and there's the demand. So it's a very low demand. So what might happen there is I might swap over one of these paddocks over to mob one and um, I, that'll even out the, the, the demand a little bit. Right, so I'm just going to give a, a dairy example now. So, okay, so my O's have disappeared and my hoggets have disappeared. And if we look at our spring milkers, I'm just going to say there's 40 spring milkers and um, I'm going to say, you know, in the springtime, they, you know, when they calve down, roughly their grass intake, or sorry, their total intake is 10 or 11 kilos. So as we go on to the spring, that'll increase by about a kilo a week. So if I say they're eating 10 kilos of grass and three kilos a meal, um, that's their total intake is around 13. So that, that's, that's roughly what your, the average herd might be around the end of February or early March. Okay. And we'll say that there's, a, there's some calves on this as well. Uh, we'll say there's 10 calves and their weight is, let's say, 100 kilos. And that'll calculate their intake at, at um, as 2% of their body weight again. So that's two. And um, if we look at our one to two-year-olds again, we'll say there's 10 of them. And we'll say they're 350 kilos, for instance. And that'll calculate seven. Okay. Sorry, get rid of this. Get rid of that. So... These are in mob two. That's that's um, one to two year olds here, and we we'll move this one to mob two because they're the heifers and the cows are in mob one. So I save and update that then, right? And I just want to worry. I'm just looking at my my cows here now. So this is the um, this is the wedge for the cows. So I have a farm cover of a thousand and thirty eight. I'm stocked at two point six seven. So if that was the case this spring, you know, there's a lot of grass there per cow, and I'll probably in that scenario. Unless I'm grazing from now on and getting out as much as possible, I'm not going to finish the first rotation on this farm because there's too much grass there. Okay, so that really needs you need to get out. So we can set this red line a bit. You know, if we put down that our first rotation is 50 days, we can uh, we could say that we could we could we could um, save and update that, and that will calculate a target pre-graze need of 1350 which is, you know, it doesn't really matter for the springtime, but for the summertime, that's bang on where you'd want to be. You want that figure around 13 or 1400. 
but the problem is then you know you're 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 only on 20 day rotation so what what happens is here it multiplies your demand by the rotation length and that's how it gets the the figure so 27 times 50 would be 1335 where if 27 times 20 if i save and update that now so that's going to bring that back down to 540 yeah 534 so that's not ideal for spring grazing so what you need to do is match your growth and your demand. So your growth could be up around 60. So I'm gonna, if I could, if I want to push my demand up to that level, well, we say, oh, in the summertime, they might be eating, might be eating 17 kilos and a kilo a meal. Uh, that'll help push the stocking rate. So if we if we do that first, we can see how the demand changes. So demand's gone up to 45 now. And we can say here, we want to graze covers of about 1400 as well in the summertime. So I might take out these, paddock 2 and paddock 15 so if we scroll down here i can change these now and i can put them out to silage cut later or silage cut now i'm going to put them in silage cut later because my stocking rate is low and i can afford to leave them out for a little bit longer but if i was very highly stocked i i couldn't really do that okay so if i take out them two that'll have uh you can see my demand now is going up to 56 i'm stocked three three point three and I'm I'm better matching, you know, my target pre-grazing yield now is about 1,100, which is not too bad, you know. Um, so I, if if that was me during the summertime, um, you know, and I was expecting a week of good growth, I'd probably be inclined to actually take out paddock nine. But what I might do with paddock nine, I'm going to cut it now because I, I want it coming back. So when I cut it, when I go when I go silage, um, cut now, it moves the paddock onto the right hand side of the wedge. So it's still in the wedge, but it's at zero. Whereas when I took out paddock two and fifteen, they have disappeared. So they're they're in this box now. They're in they're inside cut later. So they increase your stocking rate and increase your demand. So you have to just it's a bit of playing around, but you'll get used to it. And that's more for the summertime. We'll come back to that anyway. Right, John, Any just, on a, there, just on a just on a just on a a cover per livestock unit similar to maybe you know the days ahead calculation there with maybe on the dry stock, but over this over the summertime, John, there dairy and dairy uh, dairy herd there. Cover per livestock unit, what would the target be running around? Cover per livestock unit. Well, if I had a cover per livestock unit like that in the summertime, I'd be saying that there is still too much grass ahead of ahead of cows. And while while you say, well, the highest covers are only 1,200, and that's below, well, it's just on, it's just about touching the target for the pre-grazing yield of 12 to 1,400 kilos of dry matter. Um, what, what, what's going to happen there, if, if the growth's going to continue well, Joe, and say I grew 60 or 70 in the next week, because there's a lot of grass here coming, you know, the, all these paddocks are at a thousand or above it. What I might do is see paddock four there. I might, I might skip it. And you know, that's, that'll probably take me two or three days to get through. So if I go down to paddock four, um, go down here, paddock four, we can see here based on the, the number of um, cows that are there on, four, on 40 cows and what they're eating, it would take me at the moment five days to get through that. But in a week, you know, if I, if it's going to take me five or six days there to get to there, well, then that's going, to, that's going to push on. It could be a week's grazing in that. And my cover per cow will be up at 250. So by skipping this one and taking it out, that might readjust the wedge. So I want it back down about 160 to 180, which is the equivalent to 10 to 12 days ahead. So, you know, if a cow is eating 17 kilos of dry matter, multiply that by 10 is 170 kilos of dry matter per cow. And that's, that's more or less what we're setting at. Perfect stuff. Super stuff, John. And right. Just one, um, one sorry, question, Michal. John. For you, just with the suckler cow, there's just a question in there with the suckler cow and the calf. You put in the weight. Um, you added the weight of the calf on to the suckler cow. Uh, do you do that for the whole summer, or do you separate it out into cows and cows? And no, I, I might leave it like that because obviously, you know, up until maybe mid mid summer, they're not really going to be eating lots of grass. You know, it's still most of their live weight gain is coming probably from milk at that stage, and then there's obviously there's a switch around when the grass becomes more important probably into August. So, you know, coming into August, maybe your calves are 200 kilos or something like that, or, or um, maybe 250 or whatever they are. I'd, I'd separate them out then. Um, because what some fellas, the good fellas might do around them, Michal, is they'll start creep grazing some calves ahead of the cows, letting them get in the good fresh stuff and making the cows clean up, uh, clean, clean up paddocks and maybe just restricting them a bit because some of them, you know, some of them big sucker cows coming into the autumn time can be, you know, very, very heavy, and you don't want to put over conditioning, so you might sort of restrict them even a little bit. So, um, generally around late summer, you might separate them, yeah. Um, I suppose I must go into the help center here and I'll just show you. So, this is the help center again, and the section I'm looking for here is the 
cover per livestock unit, uh, yeah, covers livestock and wedge, this section here, okay? If you want to make note of that section, covers livestock and wedge. If I click into this, there's a lot of information here on working with, with the wedge, um, the projected wedge, the livestock section, so you can get more information on that again. What the targets are, so if you look at the average farm cover and cover per livestock unit and rotation length targets, so we see here, you know, this is your cover per livestock unit, average farm cover, rotation length. These are guidelines where you should be throughout the year and uh, based, you know, off your stocking rate as well. Okay, so there's some good guidelines on that uh, in there. Okay, and um, there's probably, you know, how you, how you calculate your demand. So like with the suckler cow again, or, or the sheep, um, there's targets there for beef or sheep farms. You know, what the different figures mean, it's all in here in this section. So remember the covers livestock and wedge. Okay. Um and that's probably that's probably it, Michal. I'd say it's probably over to you now, I'd say. You might just put those two paddocks back into grass there, John, if you if you could. Oh apologies, and, yeah. Uh, you don't want to cut them out just yet, Michal. No the weather's it weather's poor at the moment. <laughs> um so Grand yeah, I I'll, I'll take You wanna over take there, over there? Um, yeah, I'll stop sharing yeah. now. Just there was yeah, so a question. This, There's yeah, a question sorry. in there just on a yeah. on um on, on on a robotic system, and as we just just to cover it over as we the, you know they are becoming more popular in Ireland. But John, in terms of robotic systems, a, um to go with Mob One, Two, and Three, if they're on an ABC system, yeah, that's probably the best way of doing it. Yeah, yeah well, look, um, Michal, is there any advantages really of setting up three different farms in that robotic system ABC, or would you just be going with the Mob One, Two, and Three, or I I I go with mobs for a, ro a robotic system, yeah, 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 definitely mobs. Yeah. yeah, so you just I suppose with 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 the with the mobs there, you're probably into smaller paddocks because, you know, you're you're um you're into smaller areas really because you're you're splitting the farm into three if you like into three mobs. So you have to be very you know careful with allocations, and I suppose you learn it after after a while because you'll you'll maybe learn by mistakes um you know overfeeding them some some um on you know on on the A1 and not feeding them maybe enough on the B1 and you'll just get into the head but you you need to really be able to understand how much grass is on those paddocks and you can only do that by training your eye and being out regularly and practicing it yeah the alloc the allocations have to be really precise on the yeah. on the robotic make, system to, to get the animals to, yeah, yeah to get the animals to move um Super stuff there, John. Just a question in there. I think it was a kind of fairly much a, a double barrel question in terms of, um, I know, again, there's a lot of differences, but a, a, a first crop of silage, you know, in terms of yields, maybe if you want, if they were going to put them into pasture base, you know, a, a typical yield of a first cut of silage, where would it be coming in around? About five ton. About five ton. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. just in terms of the best the best way to approach a paddock or a field that might be maybe grazed once in the spring and then, say, set aside for maybe one cut silage or two cut silage, um, maybe only coming back into the system again in August. Yeah, uh, I'd, I'd put it on pasture base because it's, it's available for spring and spring and autumn are important. So put them on because uh, it'll help the rotation planners are doing budgets or that you need them there. And then you just just keep them in silage cut later for you know whenever whenever you're not you know if you if you graze them in we'll say the last few days of March or early April and they go to silage cut later well then they don't come back into grass until you know you've cut them their final bit and maybe they're six or seven hundred back on it and that's when they come back in so that might be might be the mid August end of August early September or something like that. And I suppose just to, just to come back on that there as well, John. It, look, I th I think it's. You know, if there's if you're recording fairly accurately on the on the milking platform and you're taking one cut or two cut silage off it, I think it's a good idea to try and you know to try and record them paddocks. You know, take a cutting away off those paddocks before before silage, and you know you get you know right good accurate data for your farm. Yeah, yeah, perfect stuff, Mihal. We might throw over to you and we keep moving. Yeah. So for the next maybe ten to fifteen minutes, we might have a look at. Uh... Uh, the PBI grass app. Uh, so I'm inside here in the, the app store. Uh, just search for PBI grass, and I'll I'll just download it. Um, and I suppose the the biggest advantage of um of the PBI grass app is you you can enter your covers, your graze dates, uh, fertilizer, your milk data, and there's a small bit of reporting as well in it. 
So I suppose it, it can be quite handy uh, to, um, to record it as you go. So we'll just click on open um, and this pop-up comes up here to say, do you like notifications sent to you? We'll just say hello. So I suppose we do send out um, grass dry matters um, every couple of days. We also would send out like the events happening like the one tonight. Um, so you, the notifications, I suppose, can be an important part of it. Uh, just put in the um, and we log in. Um, so next thing, what I need to do here is just to synchronize the app. So that's just basically pulling all the data down from the website onto the phone. Um, we can see that the fertilizer here is red and the spring rotation or the rotation planner is red, those two buttons. That's just indicating that I don't have any rotation planner put in. We can see that the, the spring one is red and I don't have a planner done yet. And the other one then is just the fertilizer and I've no fertilizer records put in. So that, that's just why it's right there. Um, so the next thing that I want to do here, I suppose I want to add a graze date. Um, so again, it can be handy to just add the graze date um, when the cows or the cattle leave the paddock. Um, so you simply go in here, you add your paddock, um, we'll select paddock eight. Um, select the date it was grazed, we just go to 1st of February. Uh, Pre-grazing yield on this paddock, um, we we'll say is 850 kilos, um, and we just click save there. Um, so that graze, it is saved, and we just do a second one quickly. Again, it just it just might speed up things when you are doing your cover that you enter them um, as, the, as the, the livestock leave the paddock. Uh, you can see the residual there is four centimeters. Um, if there's a bit more left over, you, you can increase that value. So there's... Um, just two graze dates put in there. Just click on back, back to cover data, uh, grass cover. So I'm just going entering a cover now. Uh, um, so you can see that's the cover that John put in on the 25th of um, 25th of January. And you can see the, the different paddocks there and the details. Um, so if we go add cover, again, it just kind of defaults to today's date. Um, I'm sure we, we, we'll go with that there tonight. Um, and so again, we're now in the edit, the edit mode here. So you can see our list of paddocks. Um, you can see paddock eight, that there, there's um, the, the graze date is after coming in for paddock eight. Um, and if you scroll down further, paddock 16, uh, you can see the, the graze date icon there on the right hand side as well. Um, so if we just click into paddock one, um, on the right hand side, we can see that the previous cover was 1200. And we just add 50 to it there for the moment. Um, and I just click on save and close. Um, so the save and close button, it brings us back to the list. And if we scroll down to the bottom, um, we'll see paddock one. Um, it's after turning green and um, growth rate there of five kilos. So if we scroll back up um, into paddock two, um, again, we just add 50 to it. If we click on save and next, it just brings up the paddock automatically. Um, so I suppose it's important that the paddocks are in the right walk order, um, which, which, can be, um, which can be helpful. So hopefully yeah. that's, that's working Michal, okay. I might just, just, a, just a quick question coming in there. Yeah. Um, when you're entering in your grass walk details, where do you add in the dry matter? So if you're doing the calculation when you're going round? Yeah, so I suppose if we do it here just for paddock three, um, if, if you're using um, the cut and weigh method, you can just click on calculate. Um, if you put in the number of grams there, put in the dry matter at the moment is around 14%. Um, that's calculated in at 728 kilos of dry matter per hectare. If you're happy with that, you can just click on use. It jumps back in here in the 728 and save the next, and you're on to the next paddock. Um, and if you go into the calculate here, and if you're using manual plate meter, you can put in the details there, and I suppose it calculates the height, and it calculates the cut. That option there is, is just for the cut and weigh method. Um, so if we just put in another another detail, a few details here. Yeah. Again, it's similar to what, what John went through, I suppose, we have the paddock is, is, in, is in grass. Um, you can also go into uh, different uh, statuses here. We have silage, reseed. We, we just might leave it in grass here for tonight. 
Uh, you can also put in a comment if you click on the pencil, um, whether the, the paddock is wet or, or dark, so it might be an issue or whatever. Um, and you can click on save and next here as well. Um, so what I might do here, I might just keep adding the cover and you can ask yeah. John if he's there. Yeah, there's, there's, perfect. There's, or there's, gone, a, there's one or two here. I'm just looking through them there. There is a no event. Someone asked about, is there a no event um, option on the paddock? So this time of year, you know, you might have a, put a cover of 1200 on a paddock there back in December time. And, you know, maybe it's a wet paddock or, you know, it, it, it's prone to going backwards. Or even over the winter time, you probably know one or two of them paddocks yourselves. That So... It's a you know if it if it um you if it goes greater than less than two hundred so say there's twelve hundred in December and there's only you you think there's only nine hundred on it today well that's a drop of three hundred so pasture base is going to think that was great at some stage but you're, there is an option for no event and you can click that and it's basically just selling pasture base is not an event and and you know just move move on I suppose like that so that's still there yeah um, and I suppose just to to highlight this paddock eight here I put in a group is it manually for it um and it, it's looking for looking for a cover so i suppose that's the that's the advantage of putting in uh the dates manually and just yeah. to go back over john's point there it, the cover last week here was 1600 um for some reason the covers after dropping to 1300 um so if it, it it will look for um a graze date but you can turn off this button here by just sliding it left um, and and that's that's equals no event there. Yeah, perfect. And just click yes. next to that. So um, the other thing then is there's there's people asking like in the springtime, you know, and there, there is a bit of that going on where you know one half of the paddock is dry and the other half is wet, and I'm only grazing the dry half at the moment. And I, I don't know, you know, why not I get to the other bit of it? I suppose if if it's a case that it's very wet and you're not going to get to it maybe in April and you've done your best to graze as much of it as you can, I'd probably record a grazing on it and say it was grazed. Um, because of it's a case you're not going to get into it maybe till April time well you know it's as good as grey really and if it's a case that you know I might get into it in, in a couple of weeks time but I just can't go in right at the moment I'd probably leave it and you could leave it down as being grazed um, for the next couple of weeks if you're walking just leave it as being grazed and it, it has been you know it's half grazed anyway and then just record when you get the second grazing on it I'd graze it again or there's people asking like if they're doing day and night paddocks so they might be grazing a couple of paddocks at the same time you know, just as they're grazed, then just just uh, enter the details um, on that. All right. It's, they're probably only going to be a day or two behind John, anyways, so it's not going to. Yeah, yeah. And really even if they're things. a week, it's not going to make a much difference at this time of year, like you know. Just another question there, John, that's coming in just on mapping the farm, and I suppose look at you probably have you know a couple of choices. You can you know get the Rolls Royce job in terms of getting the farm map and done, but also if you know if you want to find out the area of paddocks to map out your farm, that you know there's there's free apps out there, field area measure, and a couple of couple of different apps like that mm. that are going to get you'll get a, a fairly a fairly close um, you know I suppose area of your paddock, um, and that will be good enough to yeah. put into put into pasture base ireland yeah. like you know you can and if you have a, if you have a google account as well there's a google google my maps and that's another feature like you, you can do it from the laptop either if you if you if you know where the boundaries are you can mark them out um uh, that's that's how that's how i did my farm at home so um it seems to work okay anyway i, I get to make the decisions i want to make um i suppose there's probably a couple of questions there maybe i know and we need to address it probably later in the spring in terms of actually measuring grass and putting covers on on paddocks but maybe me we'll let you come back to you and um yeah where, so where I, at, this, at this stage here I, i've all the, the paddocks put in for this particular farm so you can see all the paddocks there are yeah. green color so that, that means that everything is okay um if if you were missing a graze date for example um a red icon would come up there so that's just sim symbolizing um that there's a bit of data missing um, so the next step in, then is to view the wedge. So let's click on the button there in the top right hand corner. Um, and this is what the wedge will look like um, on yeah. your phone. Um, so again, you have your highest highest cover paddocks on the left um, and going down then to uh, your, low, your lower paddocks on the right. And I suppose maybe one thing as well, I suppose the thickness of the bar is represented, representing the area. So you can see paddock 12 there is quite thin. So that just means that the area of paddock 12 is uh, smaller than paddock one. Um, and I suppose the next thing that we want to find out is what's our average farm cover? Uh, what's our cover per livestock unit? How many days ahead do we have? Um, if we click on the word summary, um, 
on the top. That will bring us in into um, into this report here. Yeah. Um, so this is the, the cover summary report. It, it gives the farm cover, cover for electric unit, growth, ex and, and etc. Um, and you can change the map there as well from one map into the next um, as well. So I'll just take out a paddock for silage, I suppose, would be the uh, big topical one, I suppose. So if we cl click back um, and just click on cover, it'll bring us back here. So if we just change the paddock status or if we just click into paddock one here, for example, um, it's in grass at the moment um, and scroll down here, change it to silage cut later, click on save and close. So it's after turning yellow. Uh, yeah. So it's it's not available for grazing. Michal, will you just will you just do that again, just because it went through very quick on the on the screen there. Just yeah, so we can do it for paddock two here altogether as well. Um, change the status from grass into silage cut later. Okay, yeah. Click save and close. Um, so we have two paddocks there now out for silage. Perfect. Great. Yeah, you're happy enough there, John. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you. you wedge. Yeah. They're gone off the wedge now and click on summary. And now we can see that our farm cover and cover per livestock unit is after decreasing and um, our demand is after increasing. Yeah. So I suppose the, the, the main point here is, I suppose, that uh, you record your cover, um, you make your decisions, and then you synchronize the app um, or you synchronize up the data because yeah. I suppose once you've synchronized the cover, um, you can't edit it anymore. That, that, and and Mihal, just in terms of I suppose the importance of that synchronization, you know, I suppose we often get calls when maybe the farm isn't say, you know, when data isn't synchronized and is and is therefore lost. Yeah. You know, I suppose the importance of I just mentioned the, the importance of actually synchronizing and synchronizing when you use the app first, maybe after doing some work on the on the browser. Exactly. Yeah. So I suppose I'm, I'm synchronizing the, the data here. Um, so again, once, once that is done, um, if I go back in here to the cover and go into grass cover, um, I can't edit that, that, that information. So I suppose it's just, um, it's just one point to note there that uh, you do your cover, make your changes and then synchronize it. I suppose they're, they're the big points. Great um, stuff. Then I suppose if we just move on to some other tools um, that are that are handy, I suppose again we're back on the home page. If we go into cover data, um, if we go into the planner, the middle option there, um, and you can see here, I suppose it's ranking our paddocks from the highest cover. So we can see here paddock 15 at the highest cover at um, at 17.50, um, paddock 900, uh, paddock 1200 at. Um, and we can see that we're projecting to grow uh, five kilos. Uh, if it was in the summer, for example, it might be 50 kilos. Um, so we can see here, um, if we jump down to the second paddock, paddock nine, the fourth, the measured cover was 1300. That's the, the small, the, small um, the, the value in, in, in the small print. Um, but by the time we get into paddock nine, um, we're projecting that the cover will be 1400 kilos of dry matter. Um, and if we leave the livestock into paddock uh, 15, the first paddock, it's going to take them three days um, to graze it. Um, so that's where the, the three days feed comes in there. Um, so um, we graze uh, paddock 15, 9, 12, 18, 6, 4 and 11. There's uh, seven days grass um, there, seven days grazing. Um, if we wanted to graze paddock 12 first, if you just click on the arrow on the right hand side of paddock 12, um, you can see there it's after jumping up in second place. Um, and now paddock 12 is in the is first. So I suppose the planner is just, I suppose, number one, it's calculating how many days um, the, the livestock will, will stay in the paddock. Um, and I suppose you can plan your, your couple of days grazing ahead for yourself to see what paddocks are you going to graze next and what will the cover be uh, by the time you get around to graze the, the particular paddock. Um, so that's working away there. Um, and you can also see the projected wedge. Um, so if I just go in here, um, so if I want to see the wedge in seven days time, 
Um, but maybe we can pick projected wedge. That's what your wedge will look like in seven days' time. And again, it, it's very similar to um, the previous. If you go into the, the summary, um, it'll just give the details there of, of what things will look like in, in seven days' time. Again, that's probably more of a tool for the summertime when growth is high. You're watching your pre grazing yield, you're trying to target paddocks, going into paddocks of 13, 1400 kilos. Um, so it, it, I suppose it is, it's, it's, it's a good tool in, in, in that case. Um, just, yeah, just said, you said that there, Michal, just it gives, you know, if a farmer is, you know, a little bit undecided, he thinks he's going to, you know, he or she thinks they're going to be, you know, uh, run into a bit of a surplus of grass to see a, a warm week coming, like using that, using the planner on the app can just give them that little bit of, of confidence that the decision they're going to take to take out that paddock, that that's the correct decision for the farm. Sure, yeah, and if, if you have a couple of guys working with you, um, you know, you can easily take a screenshot of that and, and send, it to, send it to him or her, and they'll know exactly the sequence of grazing or, or the amount of time that, that the stock need to stay in the paddock, or they, they can plan, plan their couple of days around it, I suppose, is, is the main thing. Yes. And yeah. I suppose another tool we, we put in was the grazing calculator. You'll see it down there, the fourth option. Um, we just put in this uh, recently. Um, again, it's it's probably for the springtime. Um, so if we just select paddock one there, for example, um, there's a cover of 1,250 in it. Um, there's one hectare. Um, so if I just put in maybe um, just go with 100 cows uh, eating 12 kilos, um, it's, it's going to do them roughly a day. Um, and if I wanted to know how, um, how many, if I needed to put up a fence, maybe for a, a 12 hour break, height 48 of a hectare, um, and I suppose it's 100 meters wide, um, we need to put the fence up 48 meters into the paddock. Um, so it can be a handy enough um, tool for this time of the year uh, to help with allocations of grass. Of course, not all paddocks are, go are going to be rectangular, rectangular in shape, but I suppose it, it just gives guys um, an idea of how much grass they need to allocate for one grazing. When you have 100 cows and um, their daily intake there is 12 kilos of grass. Um, so that can be quite handy there as well. Um, if we wanted to look at maybe some historical covers, um, you can just go in there to the, the last option. Um, and you can see that there's there's three covers recorded for this particular farm, um, but on your own farms you probably have, would have a lot of data, so you can you can scroll back to this time last year and to see wh where was your farm in relation to growth rates etc. Um, so that's probably the grass side of things. Maybe just just one thing on the livestock. Um, again, it's important that that this this kept up to date, especially on dry stock farms. Maybe that. The weight of the animals need to be increased, increased as uh, as they grow. Um, but again, I suppose it's important that um, after doing your cover, you come in, have a look at your livestock, make your edits, um, and then synchronize all together. Um, so if we go back here, I suppose this uh, rotation planners is red. So um, I suppose it's spring time as well. So I suppose we'll just add one for example. Um, so spring plan for 2021, um, I want to start grazing on the 5th um, and we'll, we'll start the second rotation on the, on the 5th of April. I have 20 hect hectares for grazing. If I save that in, um, it'll just break it down in, in for the different weeks. And you can see then on the right hand side, the target um, area to be grazed per day uh, for week one is 1.16 uh, hectares. Um, and at 6% of the farm. And as you went to your graze dates and your covers, uh, the, actual, the actual hectares and the actual percentage there will, um, will populate for you. So again, that it can be handy uh, to add the rotation planner um, as well. Uh, so if we go back, you can see now that that's after turning green. Um, and then just finally, I suppose, just fertilizer again. Um, we went through this the, the last night, had a fertilizer record, First thing we need to do is select our paddocks. Uh, so we just select paddock one, two, three, click on done. 
Um, if we go down here, and if we pick, um, if we pick urea for example, um, and then if we go uh, the amount per acre, and twenty five kilos of product per acre, um, twenty five kilos, and click on save. So there are three fertilizer records put in there. Um, so finally, I suppose the next and thing... Behold, you might just do, but going for the, for, for the folk that are still working in units per acre, you might just put that in there yeah. as well, will you, just on the fertilizer? So if we just add again, and we'll add for paddock four, click done. Um, we just select urea. So if we cl click on units per acre, again, it depends what you're used to. Half a bag would be 23 units, I suppose, in, in all, all currency. Uh, click on save. And we can see paddock four there is, is put down uh, at, at the end. So I suppose the main thing, I suppose, with the PBI uh, app is uh, number one. You're breaking up a little sure bit there, that synchronized, have uh, synchronized and, and yeah. Can you hear me? Hear you now, yeah. Let me just turn off your camera there, Michal. Well, it might just be a little bit better if you if you can there for a second. <clears throat> yeah. Um. So the, the big thing, I suppose, is keep the app uh, synchronized. Um, and to have the most up to date data on your phone. And if you are putting in data regularly, again, you could just hit the synchronize button, send it up to the website, and I suppose everything is kept safe. I suppose. And just yeah, yeah, there was a question on that there, Michal. You know, after every time you fill in the data on your on 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 the app, do you press synchronize? Do yeah, just just yeah. To, for safety, yeah, do synchronize away, man. Yeah. yeah, great stuff. That's perfect. So it's very good, Michal. Like um, and like while we're going through a lot of stuff tonight, um, the more you do this, the the easier it becomes, and people, no matter what enterprise they're in. Um, most of us are used to phones, I suppose now, and we're we're more familiar with them. But you know, after doing it three or four times, most people find you know it's it's very easy to do. And it maybe for people starting out, you know, the other challenge is probably you know estimating covers and things like that, which we'll go through probably more detail a, a different night and talk about more. I know there's a lot of questions there on on plate meters and different models of plate meters, Michal. So we'll we'll probably have to answer some of those questions. We'll put them up after the event, I think, and. Um, yeah, we'll focus more on that on another event, another webinar. Um, right, so I think, am I logging, or am I? Are you going to, are you going to go through some of the permissions there, John? Yeah, I'll probably have to log back in now. Sorry, I'll, sh I'll share my screen now. Yeah, yeah. Sorry now. Screen, yeah, if you can. Uh, okay, right. Okay, so I'm going to log in again. So when I log in again, Michal, you've synced your app, haven't you? Yeah. So what should appear then is um, the, the cover that Michal put in on any decisions he made. So we can see there, I put one in on the 25th of January. Michal's one now appears, it's today's date, and there's the farm cover, and that's how it's grown and everything. Okay, so that's when, it, when you sync it, you put the information up here, and that goes into all your reports here that you can access at the end of the year. And one of the things right, you have to put in the pre-grazing yield, you know, it's more accurate to do it and keep it up to date. And put, get into the habit of putting it in yourself because it, it just it just um it's a lot more accurate than allowing I suppose the system to do it you know because growth rates vary so much, right? So another good thing to keep on top and keep yourself motivated with this and benchmark yourself is being able to um to get get a um, you know um see where other farmers are and see see where they are you know farmers in your vicinity or or um or uh, farmers in your group. So there's a book button here, up here called sharing data with, with um, farmers and advisors. So if we click on that, we can actually, we, if we know other people who are on pasture base, we want to share information with them, we can do so, okay? So we can send a request to them. Okay, that's that's just the group you're putting them in with. It's another farmer. If it was an advisor, you can put an advisor's name here, or advisor here, um, another farmer. I'm sharing my whole farm. And I want to share all my information, so my wedge or milk information, spring rotation, out rotation, feed budgets, fertilizer, annual tonnage, right? I want to share all that information. I'm just going to continue. Okay, that's that continues. Now, 
you either know the mobile number or else the email. In this case, I'm going to use the, the email. And I think it's just demo at chagas.ie. And um, I'm going to send. OK, so I've sent a, a request to me Hall there on his on his account. And now he has to accept it. So just for the purposes of this, I'm going to go back to PBI. I'm going to log out now and log into the other account just to show you how to accept it. So if someone sends you one, so I'm going to log into demo at chagas.ie and okay, log in now again. Okay, so now I'm after getting a, a message. Since the last time you logged in, you received one new request to share your data. If you want to manage this request, uh, click go to profile below. Okay, so I'll click on this. And now if I scroll down, I can see here pending income incoming requests. And I'm just going to have a look and see what, what he wants to share. So this is all the information he wants to share, right? So just cancel that. I'm going to accept it. So I'm happy enough to share this information with this farmer. So I'm going to share it, all right? And I'm going to accept. And now that's done. So now, you know, you're set up. You know how to do the wedge. You're, you're sharing with other farmers. You know, maybe farmers who have been at a couple of years. And you can see where they are at. And, you know, it just a, it's a nice way to keep up to date with everything that's going on around your area as well. It, so I just, think that's well, great. I'll, just I'll, I'll, my, just I might share there, Jonathan. Sorry, or, yeah, yeah. There's just a couple of questions coming in there. Maybe um, uh, some people have, have, have maybe missed the first 20 minutes or something like that, or they've missed a few minutes tonight. So as I said earlier on, um, the, the webinar will be available on the, the Grass 10 page on the, the Chagas public website. Um, so um, the, the, the recording will be there, the, the slides from tonight as well, and, um, uh, and some, some of the frequently asked questions as well will, will, will be there. So just we're on the home straight now, just to run through a couple of quick bits and pieces. So look at, as John said already, it's, you know, it's, you know, if you're new to the whole, if you're new to pasture base, you're new to grass measurement, it's, it's about getting, the, you know, get, you know, getting, getting started, getting going, getting walking your farm, but like just to, and a, you know, in relation to benchmarking, you know, a lot of the people who are, you know, doing this year in, year out are, you know, are achieving really high, you know, figures in terms of grass growing are probably walking their farm somewhere in around 40 or over 40 times a year, 45 times a year. And I suppose we will be targeting minimum somewhere there in that green bar to avoid maybe some of the common pitfalls that we do see. Um, you know, farmers making in terms of not measuring enough as they, uh, you know, measuring often throughout the mid season, you know, you know, really and truly during that April, May, June time, we, we need to be walking the farm twice a week. And especially then like, you know, regular grass measurement in autumn is critical because that's really and truly the start of your grass, your grass year. You set your farm up in the back end in August, September, October for the following spring. So, and that's really, you know, you know, stopping your regular grass measurement is going to, is going to directly lead to less days of grass. And just a quick quote there from one of our, um, one of our farmers on our, our, on our, one of our grass 10 grazing courses, um, William Cleary there, the more often I walk my farm and, more, and measure grass using Pasture Base Ireland, the more often my cows go into 1400. So it gives them, you know, he, he, he's more accurate in terms of, 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 of his covers. Again, just to recap on some of the stuff we talked about earlier, the pasture base form, the registration form, you know, fill it up and get it on to support, uh, email it to support at PBI, or again, your, uh, your, your local Chagask advisor will help you um, get, get set up or we'll pass you on to, to, one of, to one of the team. Again, both the app, the app is available on the, the, the PBI app. So search for PBI grass when you go on to both Google Play and the, the app store to, to get it. So it's very important that you search um, specifically for PBI grass. Again, look at just to quickly uh, going on, like I suppose pasture base and grass 10 are, are you know, are, are, are very much linked. So, and the, the grass 10 team produce a weekly newsletter. 
And, you know, we will be going through the be, you know, it, it, I suppose it's good for maybe some of the growth rates that are coming out from pasture base and LD Ruel's um, grass growth prediction model that, that John talked a little bit about earlier in terms of maybe predicted grass growth for the, for the coming weeks. You know, maybe some research updates, upcoming events, just like, like today's events and tips and updates from different times of the year. Um, our grazing coach, uh, our grazing co our groups are, you know, we're, we're taking on some new farmers on our, on, our, on our existing groups and on new groups in 2021. So if you want to get involved with farmers, you know, that are, I suppose, in a, a similar mindset to you in terms of wanting to drive on grass production and utilization on, your, uh, on their farms, get in contact with, you know, again, you know, your Chagas advisor, one of the Grass 10 team, or go on to the uh, Grass 10 page on the Chagas public website or chagas.ee forward slash grazing, grazing, course, uh, grazing courses. Um, just in terms of linking on from tonight again, so as I said already, this was our, 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 our third webinar. In on the on the on Wednesday the third of March at seven p.m. again, so exactly you know roughly a month's time again, um, <clears throat> we'll be having our next webinar. So um, our uh, I suppose our topics on the night for that will be an update on spring grass supply from Mehall and maybe some statistics on on February grazing. Um, we'll have some practical advice on maybe you know on the, you know making the grass wedge and and I suppose more importantly the rotation planner and grass budget work for you in that in that you know in that March April period as we kind of transition from you know on a lot of farms from the first ro rotation into the second rotation and then again some tips and advice on managing that from from the grass ten team. We'll also have. Um, uh, special guests, two special guests on, on on that night: dairy farmer on heavy soils, Sean Barry from County Limerick, and JP Hammersley, um, who's a beef farmer from County Tipperary. And we're going to get two, you know, I suppose, two opinions on how they are going about managing grass on their farm during that, you know, during that late that 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 spring period from March, um, March, and into in, in, in into into April. So just to summarise again, look at thanks a million to um, to my colleague to my colleague John Douglas from from Grass Ten and Michal O'Leary from Pasture Base Ireland. You know to 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 conclude on it. Look, use Pasture Base to make data de uh, driven decisions um, with regards to grassland measurement on your farm. You know, aim for 30 plus measurements in 2021, and it all comes back down to if you have, you know, over this is this isn't, isn't a, an overnight thing. If you're getting going on Pasture Base, you know. Over three or four years now, if you're you know, measuring grass, you're building up a phenomenal amount of data on your profile. If you're recording fertilizer as well in there, like you have a, you have a huge amount of information and maybe soil fertility um, on your farm as well. So you have huge amount of data to make improvements on then. Get in contact with the team uh, over at support at PBI to get registered. And to join a Grass 10 grazing group for practical on-farm help throughout the year. Um, and to get involved with like-minded farmers and keep in contact with the, the Grass 10 newsletter for tips and updates throughout the year. So to thank the, lastly, to thank the, the sponsors of the Grass 10 team, um, or the, the Grass 10 program, the Chagas, the department, the Farmer's Journal, the um, AIB, Grass and Agro, and FPD Insurance. And lastly, thanks a million to yourselves for uh, tuning in on the night and look it was very interactive there was a lot of questions are coming in we tried to get to as many as possible and look at best of luck uh, you know with the early part of um, the early with, with with February and we'll hope to see you all on our webinar on on the 3rd of March so thank you very much and we'll talk to you next month